Welcome to Influencing Magic, Adapts Magic podcast, exploring the members of the Disney and creative communities and how they became influential in their different disciplines. We're interviewing and sharing experiences of an ever-growing influencing market, drawing from Daps Magic's nearly 20-year history within the Disney community. Come with us as we share what it takes to be a successful Disney influencer, both professionally and personally. While also seeking to influence kindness along the way. I'm Mr. Daps. I'm Annie. And you're listening to episode four wow. of Influencing Magic with our special guest star, who is popping in in just a second, uh, Miss Caitlin Robrek. So cool. The voice behind Minnie Mouse. But before we dive into that conversation, mm -hmm. what's new with you, Mr. Depps? What is new? Well, it stopped raining, so that's really good. But uh, no, we've been continuing. I feel like this is going to be an ongoing thing for all of these as we continue to upgrade the site. Mm -hmm. And so we've actually added forums on the site, which we're already testing with the team. And it'll that's be super exciting. coming out for everybody else. And, and really, it's just so then if you want something DAPS, you can just go to DAPS. And mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about technology or other platforms deciding if they want to play nice with people or not. And we can just have it all working in one place, hopefully. One stop about? shop. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and it's then it's easier because like how often do we talk about something or whatever on because we have a Facebook group for our team and we'll talk about it over there. But the information's over here. So if it's just all in one place, I feel like it simplifies. That makes sense. And we talked about simple on the one that was about me. So I'm practicing <laughs> what I preach. <laughs> how about you? What's new? Um. Well, yes, it stopped raining, although. OK. Kind of. Hot take. I still like the rain. I don't I like do driving too. in the rain, but I like the rain. It just was a lot. It was a lot. I just want balance. It has been a lot also. We have more rain than Seattle right now. Which is crazy. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as like me, myself, and I, uh, I just got back from a vacation at Walt Disney World. I'm we jealous. Went with the whole family. So there were seven of us. It that looked amazing. Went over to Florida. We had the best time. We were exhausted. Um, I feel like I have done my duty and... Uh, all of the family agreed that Epcot was the best park. So, I mean, how can we argue there with really the majority? There really shouldn't be a debate about that, but yes. <laughs> if, if if you don't like Epcot, you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> um, but other than that, uh, as far as like work and stuff, I've been redeveloping my website and kind of persona online and my, my own personal brand. And you updated your Patreon. Yeah. So it's going to relaunch. We're, we're filming this today. It's going to relaunch again because um, I changed a bunch of stuff. I suffered a lot of burnout last year. And uh, so we're trying so to. So she started a podcast with I know, me. right? <laughs> but it's it's creative that yes. is, is not something that I'm dependent on for like my career type thing. It's right. more fun. It is. But, uh, and, and it's fun to hang out with you guys and all that. So that's been a big thing, but I'm taking it easy. I've reworked it so I don't have to put so much effort and energy, and my time is more valuable to the content that I'm putting out. So I have less time, more value. Good. Yeah. So if you want another Patreon to follow, go check out <laughs> Annie's. You will not regret it. And uh, if you follow our Patreon, you will know that there's something extra special connected with this mm -hmm. episode. And if you're not following, on our Patreon yet. You probably should because it was probably, I don't know how long it was, five it was, minutes? No, it was like 10, 15 okay, minutes. Okay, 10, 15 minutes of just pure awesome and that's all I'm going to say and completely, nope, that's all we're going to say. <laughs> just, that's it, right? So as soon as we finished recording this one, um, we stopped the camera, we stopped the recording and then we started again and that, is, you will find that over on Patreon, on the Daps Magic's Patreon, Patreon, not mine. It's not on mine. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. Like, it, we were geeking out, I think, as it was happening. It was pretty fun. All right. Should we jump into the episode? I think we should. All right. Um, Tell us about our guest. Well, is there anything else that we're supposed to be shouting out? No. No. We did it. <laughs> we're good. All right. Um, let's jump into to episode four with our friend Caitlin. So a little bit of a backstory bio for Caitlin. Uh, she's a voice artist who can be heard on multiple popular shows globally, including Amphibia. Thundercats Roar, Mr. Pickles' Mama Named Me Sheriff, uh, Agretsugo, is that how you say that? Sure. Mickey Mouse Funhouse, the wonderful world of Mickey Mouse on networks, including 
uh, Comedy Central, Disney Universal Pictures, and many more. She has a wide range of voices in her repertoire that range from kids to creatures to adults. So, a big round of applause. Welcome, Caitlin. Well, welcome, Caitlin. We're so happy that you're here. I've known you for quite some time quite now. Quite a while now, uh, yeah. Probably over 10 years. And uh, it, it's kind of funny to ask you this question, but what is your voice artist origin story? It's really weird. It, it does not happen to anybody, and it, it probably never will again. That's why I'm so special. Um, so <laughs> as far as an origin story goes, I knew I wanted to do voiceover um, since I was a, a kid. Um, like how old of a kid? Gosh, let's see. I, I wanted to do acting when I saw Hook oh, okay. with Robin Williams, mm -hmm. so I knew I wanted to do that, make people laugh and do what he's doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the following year, Aladdin came out, so 1993. Okay. And that's where it really kind of honed in of, oh, I want to do voiceover. I know what cartoons are. I know what this mm -hmm. is all about. And up to that, you know, from that point on, I thought like, oh, you have to be on Broadway. You know, all the big you know, Disney people are know. on Broadway. It's true. So, you know, at a fail after a failed attempt at being on Broadway, <laughs> I it's moved so, back. It's so easy. No it's worries. It's so easy. <laughs> um, but I moved back home. Uh, after college ended and like okay well what what options do I have and at that point finally the internet was really blossoming and how you mm -hmm. could take online training or what did you go to college for uh, UC Irvine for music theater okay um, with an and I took some opera semesters there and, and I did really? an emphasis on child care as well okay. just as an extra backup but by the time I had moved back home from this brief like trip that our school took to New York and graduated and thought, okay, where do you go from here? And I was working at Disneyland at the time, so that was my bread and butter. Mm -hmm. But I, I found classes online, uh, like Bob Bergen's personal class, where he teaches for eight weeks, three hours a week. And he's got like a five-year wait list, but it's, it's a good class. And that gave me like my, my basic structure of how to take your acting and hone it for voiceover okay and i think theater training is the best possible type of acting training because you you learn to project to the back of the mm -hmm. audience you have to use your voice to deliver mm -hmm. that emotion because not yeah. everyone can see your face you can't and rely so on a microphone different, different areas of vocal training and, mm -hmm. and, and how too. are you standing mm -hmm. like you know it, it is a fully immersed character on the stage but you just you got to be sure to do all of that through your voice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like ev even people could tell like are you standing up straight are you slouching or right. you, just these little things that it took forever to learn but once you learn them you have to learn the rules before you can break them. You know, something That's something really like good that. Advice. Oh, it's like that yeah. music theory class I took. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, I remember this. Yeah, that one. <laughs> and um so once I started doing that I took I took some other classes as well. I took Richard Horvitz, I took um, Can I, I ask I, how you found those classes? Uh, online. I, I literally okay. had like Googled like voiceover training. Oh, cool. Okay. And um, I lived in Anaheim, so it's like what's around this area? Sure. Mm -hmm. And then I would go to like San Diego Comic Con every year, and mm -hmm. they have voiceover panels there dedicated cool. to that. And I met a lot of voice actors through those panels, like just talked to them afterwards cool. and asked them, you know, do you have any advice on how to break in? And I was given really good advice from like Billy West and Jess Harnell and Rob Paulson. And I took that advice because one of the most daunting aspects, a lot of people who are interested in it, it, it is a big price tag to, to do that type of training. Yeah. It's a big time consumption. And it, it all depends on what your priorities are in your personal life. Yeah. So I've known plenty of peers who wanted to do voiceover after they've gotten married and had kids and and it is a, a difficult venture because mm -hmm. your priorities are your family mm -hmm. and and probably your nine to five to help support your family sure so i completely understand that and i started young enough and like i didn't have a significant other at the time i certainly didn't have any kids so i was able to really devote myself to it because it was only me mm -hmm. that was running the risk yeah mm -hmm. And it takes it took a lot of sacrifice because I'm I'm a very neurodivergent person, so I need to take things twice or three times to learn yeah. the lesson. I think out every possible option. I overplan. I freak out about non-existent <laughs> conversations or scenarios, but I'm prepared for them, and I really weigh the risks. And I settled on like slow and steady, or or safely but persistently. So, and that, that's my advice for anybody. If you have a good setup with your 
current life, you have a good job, you have a good social circle, you have a routine with your family or not, um, if you don't have a family, but you can work, you can work in learning voiceover or learning acting mm -hmm. that will seamlessly fit with your routine and then you can increase as you go. Yeah. That way you're playing it safe, but yeah. you're still taking that risk of focusing on a new venture. Yeah. Very strategic. Like, yeah, you don't want it to be yeah. a hobby if, if you're very serious about it. But you do want to keep growing with it. Mm -hmm. sure. And then you'll probably come to that crossroad of, okay, what do I want to do? And even then, I plenty of people I know who work full-time voiceover like I do, they'll do like a closing shift at a bar or they've got, you know, they work on the weekends here or there just as that extra little safety net. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just times have changed a lot in 20 years too yeah. for all types of voiceover. So I, I support anyone's decision on what types of jobs they want to get or how slow or how fast they want to go it because you want to you want to love what you're doing totally so you you go to school you graduate from school you go to new york you come back what is the tipping point from i'm preparing i'm taking that first step second step third step being mm -hmm. strategic to hey i'm a voice artist like what where was what was your first gig the first gig, the first thing I ever did was there was a TV show on Comedy Central way back 2001, 2002 called Drawn Together mm -hmm. and a super adult show. But it was it was for its t at the time. It was so funny and very like you don't see this on TV. Yeah, it, it was very South Park ish where everything is on the line to make fun of. Nobody isn't being made fun of. Mm -hmm. You certainly probably wouldn't see it today, but it, <laughs> um, there, you know, unless there's. A place for it because yeah. South Park is still on the air today yeah but they did a direct-to-dvd movie of it and I knew a couple people on the cast and we went to the panel at comic-con to support okay. them and nepotism works so well <laughs> and and they were picking volunteers to go up and oh fun yeah and and they picked two random people from the audience and everyone's raising their hands and then my friend Diana was like pick a chick because they were just two gentlemen, and uh -huh. and Jess Harnell, one of the stars on the show, sees us. It's like, oh, I know her. Come on up. I can vouch for her. So that was that networking that you had previously done. Yes, I had I had okay. met him pre okay. prior uh, from mutual friends. Okay. Yeah. And he's he's one of my biggest supporters. He, he has, he's told me before, like you know, if you have any questions or concerns, or you just need an ear to talk to, give me a ring. Cool. Just for like a boost of support. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And so I won the contest, and I got to be in the movie and do a couple lines in oh, the cool. movie That's so and cool. they had just one little line but then he's like hey she she really is working towards voiceover do you have any other additional spots so i did like three different characters oh, fine. Mm -hmm. on this on it and i kept in touch with the creators and i still know them to this day but they had brought me in on another project um i didn't book that one but someone in the room sent me over to mr pickles which was also on adult swim and i booked the lead on that, that show yeah <laughs> Yeah. Those who remember. <laughs> Ooh. Can I ask, um, so from the time you came back from New York, just because that seems to be a point that's sticking to my head, mm -hmm. to the time that year at Comic-Con to Mr. Pickles, mm -hmm. how much time was... It's such a weird sentence. Oh, I get it now. <laughs> yeah, it was about four years okay. from... Because it wasn't just like this. No, it wasn't just like that. It was about four years. 2005 was a pivotal mm -hmm. year. So it was about four years from that when I did... Um, drawn together and about another year or two and then Mr. Pickles happened and at that point I, I have a show behind me it's a good promotion yeah and then I met a friend named Lee at the park when I was working there she she we had met under just on town square and she sure. knew Bill Farmer who's the voice of Goofy right mm -hmm. and so she introduced me to them and they were just starting a demo production house because Bill yeah. has so many years in mm -hmm. the biz and I was their yeah. first demo so he made oh, my fine. demo. I had a show. So he walked me into his agent on his recommendation. And they wow. gave me a generic audition. And they said, well, we, we're happy to sign you on for commercials. You, you have what it takes for animation, but it definitely needs to be, get polished. It okay. needs to be more honed, more controlled. Again, learn all the rules and execute them properly before you can break them and throw them out the window totally. with no fear yeah. or no half, half attempt. Sure. So... I started about 10 years ago, last January. That was like my 10-year anniversary. Wow. It's been a while. And it, it, it was a slow process after that. It took about five years of small roles here and there, some voice matching gigs, a couple one-offs on TV shows. And then I booked Amphibia. Mm -hmm. So I booked Felicia Sundu on Amphibia. 
She's so delightful, isn't she? <laughs> oh, I, you were waiting for that. <laughs> so I booked her, Little Tertiary Character, that's your word of the day. And then also <laughs> that same year, I had like nine episodes of Thundercats Roar, different characters in each one, and that yeah. one was ridiculously fun. And we recorded ensemble. Oh, and that's great. It was so yeah. much fun. And and I that's how I got to know all of that cast. Oh, cool. And Patrick in that cast brought me on to a Gretzko. And it just it helps to further right. your relationships yeah. and good word of mouth of like, hey, she's a really good actor, give her a shot. Or if you're not right for something, they may write you a character or mm. su suggest you to someone else. And it okay. all just branches out. Yeah, that says a lot too in the, in any industry that you're working at mm -hmm. is just take the chances that you have, network with people because you never know who is going to start that that action of yeah. like this person could recommend you for this and then this person could come from 10 years before and be and nice to you. everybody yeah because the the reception at the agency could be an agent one day yeah yeah and, uh, a friend of mine Erin she's at CESD as a full agent and she and I worked at Disneyland together so great so it, it, people can go in the most wild of places mm -hmm. and then after 2018 was like the real start of like hey she mm -hmm. has a bit of a reputation she's a good worker she has a good work ethic all the casting people knew who I was, whether or not I fit within the, the scope of their projects. Sure. And then 2019, um, after Rusi passed, that's when Minnie Mouse came about. And that w was also kept under wraps for about a year or yeah. so until mm -hmm. your credited projects drop and then you can be open about it. Right. And with Minnie, I keep it a lower profile, like the community certainly knows. Right. Mm -hmm. And fans will know if I'm visiting a convention as a voice actor, she's one of my stable of characters. But it is kept a bit on the down low just to preserve that magic. Yeah. Right. Especially for our little ones. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so you've now been fairly active with this for about 10 years. You mm -hmm. could say it's been a an ongoing gig. Um, how do you keep that consistency going? Like is there is there something that as you're as you're going about your days, weeks, and months, you're like, these are things I need to do on a regular basis to keep successful in this industry? Uh, auditioning, if not every day, certainly every week. That, that'll that always keep you polished. That's interesting. Keep you up, yeah. Cape. And, and there's, there's slow weeks. Like this last week, I think I had two auditions that came in just because it's, it's slow at the moment. Okay. But three weeks ago, we had like 14 auditions And what total. is that like? It'll come in. There's commercials. There's video games. There's animation. Um, I also do looping. So I have I do looping projects where we go in and fill in voices in the backgrounds oh, of shows okay. or films. Okay. So like for Book of Boba Fett, I'm in the first couple episodes because I did a lot of the Tusken Raiders. Oh, that's or amazing. We did like aliens in the bar. <laughs> yeah. And th there's some fun stuff coming up for other projects that will be released, and I'll yeah. definitely. Hi, that's me. When they <laughs> yeah. pop out. <laughs> yeah. But um, those projects I really like because you can just stretch. Mm -hmm. your vocal cords in different ways it, you can practice your realism because they always say like this is a grounded realistic take and like when you say that is it really cinematic if there's no visuals attached to it that match the performance you're expecting yeah. more out of animation because my brain mm -hmm. went like five different directions the moment you said this is a grounded realistic take and i'm like yeah is it serious i was is like it, yeah. well yeah. and, and yeah. We, there, i'm sure anyone could give an example of a movie or a tv show where they had an on-camera actor hired for a role but they they have a very specific sound this is their tv and film acting and it doesn't match the animation of their face okay or their character it comes sure. off bland okay because they're not animation actors that they they're not pushing that exaggerated version sure. of themselves or that more evisceral performance as mm -hmm. opposed to tv and film where a lot of it is in your face yeah mm -hmm. The, yeah. the voice is like secondary to what you're visually seeing. Yeah. So for animation or voiceover or podcasts or, or radio, right. the voice has to be the first thing and then visuals can be second, depending who you ask. Yeah. But, and then there's people- You're the expert here today. There, there's people <laughs> like, I when I watch Monsters, Inc., I'm not constantly taken out of it by thinking it's just Billy Crystal and John right. Goodman. No, yeah. it's, it's Mike and Sully 100%. Mm -hmm. They are those characters, mm -hmm. I'm in that world, I'm immersed in it. Totally. But, it, but if I see a certain other movie with a particular actor, the whole time it's like, it's just this actor talking. And I, I might miss half of what I'm watching because I can't not that hear totally yeah. and be taken out of it. Mm -hmm. And those movies tend to not succeed as well. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, who knows? I'm not the caster. But, <laughs> yeah. Maybe but someday. We, we, hope for know, the, right? we do hope for that. Everyone wants their project to succeed. Yeah. Oh, totally. So... So what were some of the challenges that you faced along the way? 
there was a lot of sacrifice involved where working at a, a minimum wage job, your, your funds can only go so far. Mm -hmm. And af at you, you only have money to play with after you've paid your rent, paid your utilities, gotten food for the week or the month, upkeep your clothes. Um, it, how much do you want to put in savings for an emergency? You know, you have right. to look through all those elements. So I only had so much money on at hand. Mm -hmm. And my parents were very generous to help me out with some classes here and there because mm -hmm. it's an investment on their part. That's how they saw it. Yeah. And I would work an 8 to 4.30 shift at Disney, clock out, drive straight up to Burbank, get dinner, do Ugh. a 7 to 10 class, meet that casting director, tell them who I'm with, get to know them. Hopefully I've brought one or two pieces of copy for two archetypes that are exactly the opposite mm -hmm. or very honed. One's animated, one's realistic. Okay. Like I do my homework for that. Mm -hmm. And then drive back home. And this is about, it's about a two hour drive up there and probably 45 minutes back. And then go to bed early and do it all the next day. Yeah, I feel that. <laughs> yeah, I would take like maybe two <clears throat> classes a week. Wow. And for um, how long did you do that? I still do it. Okay. I still Good do it. Yeah, okay. that's great. I mean, I de I've definitely p pick and parse what classes to take. Mm -hmm. So um, when, when a lot of these workshop type places bring in our Disney casting directors, I don't, if, if they're brand new and I'm able to get in the class, I'd love to do that. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, Everyone at the team knows who I am. They know my work. Sure. They've gotten all my auditions before. Yeah. They can see the range. If there's something new I'm trying or if I just haven't seen them in a long time, I can do a refresher. Okay. And and specifically say, like, oh, I, I know you received my work, but I'm wondering if there's something I do in all my auditions I shouldn't be or is there something missing that we could work on today to mm -hmm. improve those auditions. To keep honing that yeah. skill. You, you always want to make the focus yourself on it. Mm -hmm. So if I'm not booking things – I don't automatically think like, well, my agent's not submitting me. I'm not at the right agent. Like, no, no, no. It, it's something I'm doing uh -huh. okay. because they're all they're doing is putting it from yeah. my hands into the casting director's hands. And if if they feel I'm I shouldn't be submitted on a project, mine would tell me, hey, this isn't quite working out, Caitlin. We're not going to submit it. And I've even asked too. I'm not sure how does this sound to you guys. Mm -hmm. Like I take that initiative to really talk to my agents and work with them because mm -hmm. if I'm not booking, they're not making their money. Right. Yeah. And I want to be someone who they can send out on most every project that I'm right for. Yeah. And really give a, a good performance for what they're looking for, a good performance in my opinion, regardless yeah. of the specs. Right. Or the term is strong and wrong. So if you do just a wild card <laughs> take. just went for it. Like, hey, this is a military-esque woman. Caitlin doesn't exactly exude low-voiced, authoritative military woman. But here's her opinion of this take, if she herself were that character. It's a really wild, not yeah, not vocally correct take, but it's evocative and it's yeah. it's achieving the goal of this audition. We're sending it as a, a wild card. Yeah, and it's gonna make you stand out too, yeah. more than anybody else. Well, and like I guess the original pitch for Hades from Hercules is they wanted that Sean Yu type of yeah. deep aggression. Yeah, and then James Woods came in and completely changed it, and no one expected that. Right, it's it's very similar to something like that. You could be something completely off archetype, but as long as it works. It's a new flavor. Mm -hmm. So how do you deal with, I heard you say, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work because that's not what I'm looking for. The mm -hmm. rejection component, because I know that's everything in life, but yeah. you're literally putting your voice and your performance out mm -hmm. for everything. Mm -hmm. How do you, especially at the beginning, deal with rejection? It, it's hard to deal with it at the beginning because you care so much about these auditions and a well-written audition, you fall in love with it. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that was one of those things that it took a long time to learn. Just because you didn't book the, the gig doesn't mean you didn't get the job. And the, that what that means is the job was to embody this archetype, to give a strong point of view and to give an organic, fully emotional read of your scene or just 10 singular lines at improv, at flavor, at emotion. If you achieve that, there's no reason you can't do this. It's just we all can only pick one. Yeah. And yeah. and once it's out of my hands and my agents, who knows what happens? Right. Mm -hmm. it, hey, it's between you and Lucy. Um, yeah. But, but John, the director, his ex-wife is Caitlin, so he's having a lot of trouble. There was a role I really, really desperately wanted, and I was a, a very good fit for it, and I had approval from a lot of people. And it was me and another gal, and the reason I didn't book it was – the person who had who was in charge of the project, they said, I just worry about her talking to herself. She's doing another role in this project already. Oh. And it's a passion project for me to do this second voice. Mm -hmm. But they just worried about the characters talking to mm -hmm. each other. 
and they were completely different. And if you've seen Futurama, you know, Billy West does four characters and they all talk to each right. other. Yeah. So it was very, I did my job and I, I know for sure I would have killed it. Yeah. But that person's feelings were in that position and she just said, I just worry and yeah. I can't get over that. Mm -hmm. I'd like to go with the other lady. And that's what they did. That makes sense. And it makes, it makes perfect yeah. sense. And it, it stinks, but it's just part of the gig. So and did you have a way at the beginning, especially for somebody that maybe wants to become a voice artist that you get that first no or rejection whatever it is like what did you actually like how do you react to that and how do you move past that um in it's, that moment it, it's it's a little grief it's a little bit of grief each time it happens because when you're new to anything you go full throttle you go hard yeah. and you invest a lot of yourself into it so getting consistent rejection and this gig is 99 percent rejection but it's also investment yeah mm -hmm. like we were saying so i i don't often book a lot of work because it the pool is so wide now especially now that a lot of things are remote mm -hmm. and a lot yeah. of actors live in different cities so there's a much huger pool yeah some casting people they want to they want to cast the tried and true actors who have been around 20 plus years sure so it's like i just don't have the time to listen to these auditions yeah this woman we know for sure she can do it let's just bring her in yeah. And yeah. we'll for sure get what we want instead of taking a risk with someone new. Sure. It, it, it changes. And the best thing I could do is just let it hurt. Okay. Let, yeah. let myself feel upset. Let myself feel angry. I would talk to my friends face to face to vent those feelings, mm -hmm. explain why I felt that way. So mm -hmm. at least I'm vindicated. Yeah. And then treat yourself to something, a movie or a nice dinner out. Sure. But, <laughs> you know, I don't post online about it. Right. Yeah. I never talk to agents or fellow voice actors about it because it, it's all part of the gig. Yeah. And at some point, being sad about the nose is just so tiring. Mm -hmm. And you just want to move on from it. Yeah. So if you're in that moment with your audition and I'm really proud of what I did, if I have questions, I'll just flat out ask my agents. I'm not sure. What are your thoughts? Mm -hmm. This is a little new territory for me, but sure. I do like what I did. Yeah. If I have to change anything and I submit it and then I just focus on something else yeah. the next day. And it get the more you do it, the easier it will get. Okay. You, you just have to let yourself feel anger or sadness or or even bitterness. Just yeah. you have to go some, through the process. Go yeah. the emotions. Let oh, them yeah. have their and space. It's, and and yeah. unfortunately, you know, there are some things that just aren't fair. Yeah. yeah. Like if, if you see the same people booking, it feels unfair. But they don't feel that way yeah they, they, they've great. put in they're just as great. much time and effort and growth into their careers as you have if they've been doing it longer they've paid their dues yeah, yeah. and it's it's just kind of one of those facets but if you keep a good heart about yourself and a good positive attitude after you've processed those fair feelings mm -hmm. it'll just let it out into the universe and you can unload that burden yeah that way you're a joy to continue working on your you still love your craft you love your people and I always tell, you know, toxic positivity can, can creep up on you. Yeah. You don't want to try to kill the feelings of anger or sadness or bitterness because mm -hmm. they are valid feelings. Mm -hmm. yeah. You let yourself feel them, but you, you keep it to yourself in a close circle. Right. Yeah. Because you don't owe anyone else your personal life, your personal thoughts. Right. Speaking yeah. of your, your inner circle that you've brought up a couple times, and you also said that you don't share this with other voice actors mm -hmm. in the industry. Do you have uh, like a specific circle of friends, family, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. fellow actors at all that you, you do share this with? Uh, my roommate, Victor, he's an actor as well. Uh, mm -hmm. He does a lot of TV and, and film stuff, but he understands that rejection aspect or he's done some stage work or just casting projects at theme parks too where he mm -hmm. worked. So he understands that feeling. It transcends that and my friends Emily and Bree they're not actors at all but they also understand just that feeling of rejection yeah. of putting yourself out there and it didn't come back in any way to benefit you it's a loss yeah and there was and Monsters University Mike gives that speech at the end by the lake and it was a very important speech because he was saying I wanted it more than anyone else yeah. I studied every book I tried so hard and I still wasn't allowed to have it it was a very real dialogue yeah. he had and it cover it it speaks to a lot of people and that and I when I first saw that I kept that in mind too because mm. nothing if you're the best if you feel you're the best at something it's still not a guarantee right and you have to be prepared to not get something 
uh, and it's harder if it's something like this is a once in a lifetime chance. Sure. Mm -hmm. You know, as opposed to like, well, th they'll have another audition in two months. Uh -huh. You know, yeah. the more chances at something, the easier it is to handle right. the yeah. rejection because you just keep trying. Yeah. Or in the process of trying, something new will come along that you didn't even think of. And now you have a new venture to go through. Yeah. Or those auditions that I've been turned down for, they've kept me in mind for this character mm -hmm. later on. Additional voices, you know, if your yeah. range is wide enough, they, they can trust you to come in for those small ones. Mm -hmm. So it's constantly showing the casting Pearsons and Pearsons and your agents. We got sophisticated. I know. No. It's, it's constantly assuring <laughs> them that you're a team player and that you, you, you can be trusted. You looked at the bow tie, didn't you? I looked yeah. at the bow tie. <laughs> the polka dotted bow tie yeah. and the runchy ruffle. Yeah. But we are really dapper today. <laughs> here I am in a lemon shirt. I ain't bitter. <laughs> but because um, we're all human. Yeah. yeah. And anyone who's too nice selling something yeah but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know it, it's it's nobody's burden to bear but my own mm -hmm. yeah. when I when I go through the rainbow of emotions mm -hmm. but I owe it to them to be my best self yeah and my best self is usually a positive person I'm open to trying new things I'm very grateful I'm very talkative and I'm I, I try to be progressive and not pushy it's a fine line that I walk every day yeah you know? which which makes sense because I think of like when I think of our experiences together for the years. Some of my favorite ones have us been in a car just chalk talking. Just talking, yeah. Like we and in our conversations go everywhere. And like, there's Lauren in the back. Uh, uh -huh. okay. <laughs> but it's it's one of those weird things that you really do connect with people in a really positive way, I feel like. Yeah. As as I watch um you do things. You've said range a couple of times. And Because and I have the range, darling. Yes. I have the range. And you do. You have <laughs> What I'm guessing is quite a, a large range for for voice artists, if or a wide range. Is that a better way? Yeah, that's good. Um, wide range. <laughs> I'll let you have it. So, how did that start, and how did you spread it out? Like, how did that grow? A lot of people who grow up with cartoons and animation back back in my day, you know, you had Looney Tunes, which were big and broad and brassy because they filmed mm -hmm. in those giant sound stages. Yeah. So Mel Blanc and in June, they had to scream and get right. loud. That's why Bugs has that great scream half the time. Because yeah. in order to get it on the film, they has to fill up the whole space. That they didn't sense. have smaller booths at sure. the time. Or if they did, I could be lying completely. But hey, nobody you know knows. What? Once they again, know. you're the expert today. <laughs> <laughs> but um, watching those cartoons and then the 80s and 90s, mm -hmm. it was very, I don't like the term cartoony, but it was very exaggerated, very vaudeville, expressive. very expressive, yeah. very sure. Broadway style, very emotionally evocative and then as different animated styles come along it, you know it gets grounded realistic like a video game sure. or a bojack horseman like these types of ones that are like they're, they're, you still hear a lively voice coming out a, a mm -hmm. very naturally cartoony voice that isn't a monotone sure. when they say like we want it realistic and grounded it's just your natural voice just don't be monotone yeah and It'll it and they'll know like if you truly just talk in your natural voice, your natural inflections. This is know. what you got. They'll mm -hmm. know, and that's what callbacks are for. Mm -hmm. But I all I definitely started out with the wild and wacky, and then uh, did you have like a character voice that was yours that you created at some point that was kind of like your first? I don't know. Like, like, I don't actually know how this this progresses, but a, a lot of it comes from mimicry. Mm -hmm. Like so did you I'll have one mimic... that you mimicked early on. Oh yeah, I, I would always do. Um, B. Berendette's Witch Hazel, because she, oh, she, yeah, yeah. she was the first Witch <laughs> yeah. Hazel before June Foray. Yeah. And I just always remember, like, come to my house, children, and I'll give you cookies and candy and sour <laughs> apple upside down pound cake and come, la ta 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 ta. Yeah. Or, or, um, the mom, the be be the buzzard's mom, like, what are oh, you yeah. doing to this little boy over here? <laughs> just, they, just what accents and dialects okay. and, or just mimic people you hear on the street or family members. Sure. You know, oh bless her heart. Are you still trying to lose weight? You, you oh, just so keep bad. trying. Yeah. I am so impressed with how you try. You know, I, I bless your heart. And <laughs> just like so backhanded bad. compliments, uh -huh. yeah, or just little things. Or why did my grandmother always used to talk like you know as yeah. long as I've known her? And are those her real teeth? That's between her and God. <laughs> but you'll hear something out of it. So, like, that's a more grounded, realistic grandmother, because that's what yeah. mine sounds like. Okay. Yeah. And then these ones are just like, oh, you're so charming and sweet. You belong in a cartoon. Or, 
Uh, get those kids off my lawn before I shove my cane so far between your shoulder blades, I'll use you like a marionette, you know. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So you, you find different flavors for each type of voice. Sure. Or or mimic your friend's kids. Yeah. My, my friend's kid, Hartley, she always talks like this because it's a question and she doesn't know her R's. <laughs> She's working on it, though. That is cute. It's really cute. That was my little sister growing up. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure she's happy I'm telling the world this. But uh, What's she going to do? Come out of the screen and fight us? <laughs> no. Well, then we're fine. I think we're fine. We're good. Exactly. So We how know the many... rules, so we just broke them, right? We can just lock yeah. the door. Yeah, there you go. The she can't get in. So like, how many different characters do you think you have in your arsenal-ish? Like, I don't even know if this is a good question to ask. but It's a, it's a good question. Um, and again, it kind of comes back to that divide of I'm a very – animated range for, right. for like these are very much cartoons for all ages or kids or cartoons mm -hmm. for kids so it's meant to be those exaggerated voices sure. but I get you know, from a baby up to a grandmother, there's, I have, I have like, you know, if you give me an age, I try to think, okay. And, and sometimes kids, like, the, the voice can fit a range of years. Sure. Or yeah. if you just slightly tweak it, it can go up. Or, at, you know, at some point it drops, like, you know, well, how old is a teen boy? I don't know, like, maybe 14, but after that, get a real dude. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> right. And then m moms were hard to tackle because I'm not a mom. And I'm oh, trying okay. not to go into the mom voice. Yeah. You know, Ward, I don't think the beaver has come in for dinner yet or, or something like yeah, that. The... Yeah. And just anyone can be a mom. My mom does not sound her age at all. She okay. sounds like she's early 30s. Okay. But just a, a mom voice can be any voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just just be yourself. Definitely, folk, you know, what what I've babysat enough kids. Okay, I know how trying they can be. Mm -hmm. I know how proud I can be of them. I know how to soften it when it's like, hey, we have to get down on their level. So it's it's the life experiences that will give the credits to your voice instead of the sound. Yeah. That's very good. I yeah. feel like working at the park, too, you probably got so many, like, oh, yeah. literally a range of characters, not the ones that are at the park, but, like, the people that come to the park. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite that, part I of Disney. I feel like that would be such <laughs> a and great... It shows every you know, type of parenting style there is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, there's, like, a TV show, like, which parenting style is the best? And, like, you can't say that as a fact. It depends on the kid. How Yikes. is the kid responding? Yeah. I could parent my child five ways. We'll try each one, and whichever one he listens to and focuses on, that's the one to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you can't... You can't predict that. That is totally But I true. definitely see good parenting and bad parenting. Yeah. Good parenting is whatever your child needs, you do your best to meet that need, whatever the style is. Bad parenting is, oh, you didn't see him punch Goofy, <laughs> but you're still telling me he didn't do it. Mm -hmm. We saw. Yeah. We know. That. And if you won't talk to him, maybe we will. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, you know, the, the, the best and the worst of people can come out in high stress. So. Sure. Yeah. Which is interesting Again, also. we're all human. So what advice would you give someone who wants to pursue voice artistry? Start slow but steady, you mm -hmm. know, because you, you need to love the journey as much as the end result, whatever that is. If the end result is I'm working all the time, that's years and years of networking and, and good work ethic and being always open to learning and change. Like that's that's too mm, gelatinous of an end goal. Mm -hmm. Like an end goal of sorts is performing as Minnie because it's a beautiful, beautiful role. Yeah. And I hope to have her for many, many years. Everyone knows who she is. She's always active. So I do love doing that. But mm -hmm. I also want to do other work because that just fills your soul. You know, yeah. it's interesting. You just hit something there as we were talking about sometimes voice actors pull you out of, of the, the role or out of the moment when you're watching it. Mm -hmm. And I love that I watch – a lot of stuff with Mickey, Mickey mm -hmm. and Minnie, and I never am like, oh, that's so and so. Mm -hmm. In my head, even knowing who the voice actors are, I still am like, oh, Minnie Mouse, Mickey Mouse, I love them. You know, like then and, we did our job, and, yeah. and I, I hadn't really considered mm -hmm. that till after hearing you talk about that a minute ago. But it's, it's um, embodying that character, yeah. and yeah. not just the previous person's interpretation of the character. Like, I mean, afterwards, you, I'm usually like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> or if it's like, wait, that's her. I recognize the voice. She's doing another character. That, but yeah. even then, like, she doesn't sound like that normally. Like, no, of course not. Right. But, um, oh, I just lost it. <laughs> it was so good, too. What was I going to say? 
Nope, it's gone. <laughs> uh, just to add in too, um, I I did a little research on you. I did some internet stalking before you before you came in, as one does. You did know. you watch the CCTV video footage? I have not. Then I didn't do it. Continue. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I thought it was really interesting because kind of what you said about about not knowing the difference between various voice actors doing the same role. Listening to your voice, I immediately is it, your regular voice. I mm -hmm. can hear Minnie in the tone of you mm -hmm. when you speak, and it's very interesting because I'm like, oh well, of course, of course she can do it because she's already there. It, it's it's just a luck of the draw yeah. formation of vocal cords. Yeah. I, I just got very lucky. How often do you think that happens? It it can happen. Rusi spoke that way, like that yeah, was her voice, yeah. and she would she had this sort of babyfication in a good way. That, good that brought Minnie to a certain place that you just didn't hear from anyone else. Mm -hmm. But it's this mature mouse lady. Right. Yeah. But it worked in those ways. Very 1920s, very vaudeville style. Mm -hmm. So once I understood that's a core element of Minnie because that's where she originates from and listen to all the women who have performed her, like several one-off ladies mm -hmm. and then Rusi who really crafted her to be a fully realized character. The sound is is a gift the sound is pure luck that i can hit the tones i have right. to make sure that i'm bringing forward the character that she is mm -hmm. the acting that she does the style the nuance the little affectations that all together creates the character and the pitch of the voice and where she sits is just the vehicle that delivers it mm -hmm. yeah because plenty of of young ladies give their impersonations or impressions online and it's it's what they're hearing Mm -hmm. sound wise but when I kind of realized I could do this voice I started paying attention to how does she pronounce her words does she have nasality does yeah. she have crackly vowels does she say her t's very pluto you mm -hmm. know she has to t really <laughs> yeah. hit a t it's these it's these small yeah. things and if you understand that integrity of a character that that core build then whatever I can offer is just the skin on top. It, mm -hmm. And then a, a, as time progressed, you know, as, as Rusi's projects finished and mine really started taking over like this, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. At this point, this is kind of the more commonly heard sound. Yeah. Um, there's still, you know, 30 years of, of wealth of her material. Sure. For mm -hmm. sure. But a lot of our current day stuff is me. So that starts taking over and it starts becoming, you know, it settles into the norm. And once it settles in and like, okay, this is the voice that we are hearing, that we're mm -hmm. enjoying, even if it sounds completely different to some person's ears, right. mm -hmm. if the character's there, that's that's where the trust comes. You can trust the character. Yeah. Would you say there's an mm -hmm. element of life experience and and ways of thinking that comes to that character as well, like that you bring to it? Uh sort of. I, I think. I'm more I going think... back to what you said earlier. I was like, well, what was what. You know, what did you bring from inside? I, th I think a lot of that comes from, I'm a big Disney fan in general. Right. So I had seen so many projects with her and with Wayne Alwine and, and Bill for eons. Mm -hmm. So I, I grew up on a lot of these things. Yeah. So it helps l l training the ear to hear those things mm -hmm. and bring that ability of hearing the nuance and, mm -hmm. and hearing the train. Yeah. And then, not masking, but like, mimicking embodying it and just sure. and, and like a little magpie you know like repeating what i'm yeah. hearing but making sure like what you hear isn't just like a one-off impression at a party like i have a whole scene of dialogue to deliver and, mm -hmm. and oftentimes on mickey mouse funhouse she's the one who delivers what's the problem how do we break down the problem very simply <laughs> yeah. for children to understand uh -huh. what's the solution what's the moral of the story mm -hmm. she's the usual vehicle mm -hmm. that gets that home because she's the friend everyone's looking towards she's sure. the maternal s character that kids look up to yeah mm -hmm. so un understanding those elements it, it was a talent too like l being trained in that way by working for disney having the ability to do wild and wacky animation helped like with Wonderful World of Mickey Mouse where she's allowed to do mm -hmm. the wacky zany vaudeville stuff. Yeah. So I think being able being able to do all these facets and understanding those facets and knowing to respect those facets, I think I was able to bring that. That's cool. Not yeah. just the sound. That is very cool. Yeah. That's great. Um, is there any other advice you would give since we've gone all over the place, since I originally asked the question, for <laughs> somebody that wants to be a vocal artist? The, the, the always play it safe because mm -hmm. you have to make sure you're protected. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whatever that means to the performer, protect yourself financially, protect yourself from stress or, or worry or fear. 
there's it's it's not hard I'm to assuming start. You're gonna have to protect your voice at some level. Oh yeah, too. I I don't do if I do any type of like screaming or or monster creature sounds for looping or for video games. Those casting directors know how intense it can be, mm-hmm. so they already schedule those things for either end of day or for sure on a Friday, so you've and got then some rest over rest the weekend. Bubbles. Drink yeah. lots of water. Yeah. I I take throat coat with honey. I don't care for tea, but I have a good That's tolerance. The best tea, though. I have That's a good strong tolerance <laughs> for throat coat with honey. Yeah. So I know, like, hey, you don't really like this taste, but it's serving its purpose. Okay. So you can get. Good starter microphones. I started out with an AT2020 USB mic, and that that was completely fine for auditions. Mm-hmm. Uh, not for sessions, but for auditions, because prior to the pandemic, you I would have gone in studio. Yeah. So the, the mic for auditions didn't matter. Mm-hmm. I do this a lot, in case you yeah. haven't noticed. Quote, <laughs> quote. <laughs> uh-huh. um, but I used Audacity, which is mm-hmm. a recording program. It's free. Yeah. And I still use it today when I do at-home sessions because it exports to the 24-bit wave. Mm-hmm. That's that's good quality. Yeah. And, and so yeah. you probably now you've seen an evolution too from a mm-hmm. technology standpoint. Now that you're going into Audacity mm-hmm. and, and Audition, I guess you could mm-hmm. say also from Adobe. Did you have to discover you have to learn these things, or is it something that's pretty simple? That's I I learned a lot of it over the years because. I would record in my closet. I would listen back. I would delete, you know, and I learned how to edit by editing these auditions to be concise. I leave my breaths in. There's no reason not to, unless it was like I ended the line, like, okay, <gasps> and then I'll go back and cut out the a, a very clear gasp yeah. of air. So some some lines will just go right into the next. But if it's a long run on, I'll, I'll put an improv line in there to bridge them together or put affectations and breathe through it like, what bugs me is like hearing little clicks and things. Yeah. So once I, I learned how to do that type of editing, it made it really simple to, mm-hmm. to fix up an audition file. Mm-hmm. I learned about, you know, record 10 seconds of room noise. You can strip the no- room noise room from your file. I can, and, and I do very minimal. I record it, strip that, that room noise, compress it so it all has a nice equal balance and then like negative three normalization fancy mm-hmm. word fancy yeah. word yeah and just submit it <laughs> and if there's any concerns you know it would get recorded in studio if if i was if me doing that was problematic on every audition i would have heard about it by now yeah do you think I that's absolutely a good would've. thing to learn for someone who aspires to be yes because sometimes people might not have a very good microphone or room tone setup you know right. you, you don't want to submit something where there's a lot of noise in the background right. or popping your peas. Or so you're saying don't do it on your phone? A lot of phones, not that bad. Oh, okay. Like they're getting a better. lot of people I mean, they who are. like they can record in like the microphone. Yeah. But like the pee pops are the most yeah. devilish ones. Okay. <laughs> and, and I think just like, you know, stripping the room noise and helping to boost it, it helps the listener. Mm-hmm. And it's also just a risk. If it's just a bad file sound, I would hope that actor is told that. That way they can yeah. take the steps to improve it. But, you know, start off small. If you have a closet, your clothes help it. That yep. real easy microphone, I think it was like 100 bucks when I got it, like yeah. 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. Free programs and email them or upload them wherever. And that's mm-hmm. a good starting one. Yeah. And then eventually, like, when the pandemic hit, I upgraded to the XLR cable microphones. Mm-hmm. I, I got the insulation padding, like a b- big box of padding for 50 bucks on yeah. Amazon. And yeah. Put it up in the in the closet and the clothes help out. Mm-hmm. A ring light for Zoom stuff. Sure. I took apart this enclosed booth I had bought and pinned the pieces to the wall, nice. including an overhead. Yeah. So it w- my voice wouldn't bounce off the actual ceiling of sure. the closet. I didn't uh-huh. have to treat that. I had an overhead. Nice. And it all just fit really well. And I've got a good setup. Like people sign off on it for remote recording all the time but it's cool. it's ramshackle it makes me in my brain i just saw like a spray tan like like box you know when you go in to get a spray yeah. tan yeah yeah <laughs> and, and that I like, like where are you going with this well, and, and during the pandemic i had a studio apartment and it the floor design was uh, a one bedroom apartment and the floor design was the same as a two bedroom you just didn't have the second bedroom you had a balcony but because they had to cut that room out it left this odd alcove Oh, nice. Like indenture that would have been part of the room. And like, oh, yeah, a bookcase could go there. Or. Or. (laughs) So I built my booth in there, and I had curtains. Nice. And and the computer was outside, so the fan noise wouldn't be Mm -hmm. too bad. But even now, because my computer will start up with fan noise. Yeah. Yeah. And they can take care of it. They can take care of car noise. 
That's awesome. Or dogs or helicopters. Yeah. Or we'll just re-record once they've passed. Yeah. Right. But the, there's the, everyone's advanced so much. So it makes remote accessibility so easy. It just it just get, the pool gets larger because now right. everyone mm-hmm. can from anywhere do this. Do you think that changed during the pandemic? Because literally everybody was remote. Yeah, we all had to learn right away. You better get remote because voiceover didn't stop. It was yeah. the only entertainment avenue yep. I think that it continued was, because it fit. It fit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I got Source Connect standard, and you know I I up, I don't use it all the time, but I've used it plenty of times where it's paid for itself. Mm-hmm. You know, clean feed. Ip diddle is that the word? Ip diddle, yeah. <laughs> sure. But th- there's lots of there's lots of ways to do it where they can take control. They can control my computer through the Zoom yeah. if they want to set up my settings. But I've done it so often that it, it works pretty seamlessly. And for mm-hmm. the pandemic, if there were people who were head voices on shows and like we need them, mm-hmm. they're not replaceable. And I would hope no one is. Yeah. But they would send rigs to those persons' that homes makes sense. and like, okay, here's how you install it. Here's how we set it up. And then once they were allowed to go back in studio, they sent the rig back. That makes or sense. Or it's like, you know, has it been damaged at all or has it had this wear and tear? I could understand if they had to pay for it. Yeah. Or it could be just a write-off on the company because it was worth that investment. Right. Yeah. I, I had my setup, my old setup was signed off by every studio I worked with. Mm-hmm. And that, I gave that a B- minus myself. And so when I, the, my setup now in my newer apartment with the walk-in closet, sure. I tested with every, I, you know, DreamWorks, Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, Disney, I tested with all of their main engineers, and they've all signed off on it. That's awesome. Your so, closet is studio approved. Yes. And mm-hmm. so if I have something that is like <laughs> um, 30 minutes worth of work or less, I'll do it remotely. So I don't Rather have to drive, drive up to Burbank because yeah. I still live down here. Yeah. But if it's like an hour or more or there's singing involved, I'll drive up. Okay. I yeah. like going in person. Yeah. How much – this is just me being a geek in the moment. Mm-hmm. In general, in the industry, how much is remote? How much is in studio now? I don't even know if I could say. Like, well, how about we, for you? It was like 90% in studio to the pandemic. Right. And then 100% remote. Yeah. And studios are back open. Yeah. And I get, if I have to hazard a guest, I would say 60% in studio, okay. 40 remote. So it's kind of working its way back. There. It's, it's, it's working its way back, but it'll never be. Ninety percent. No, a lot of our amazing voice actors have moved out of the state mm-hmm. to go be with family, yeah. not just for lockdown, but because remote is now widely accepted. Yeah. Sure. And it's completely like there's no reason it can't work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everything is so set up for success. That's D. Bradley well. Baker can move back with family right. out mm-hmm. of the state. No one's going to tell him no, because <laughs> we all love him and he works huh. so often. So his setup is pristine. Yeah. But and it, so he's only remote now. But it's accessible, and there's no traveling between studios. Right. Like this, this ends at three. All right, I have one at three fifteen, so I'm sure it helps. Wow. That's that's super cool. Yeah, I like I like going in studio. I like seeing people, yeah. getting out of the house, yeah, and I it's giving so. the studios work. Mm-hmm. The engineer will have work Either because way. they tap in from the studio. But for sure, they the helpers at the studio they need to get me tea. <laughs> they need to get me a cookie. Your, your throat coat, right? My throat coat with, with honey. With honey. <laughs> But I, I like seeing them, and I've had law, and they're very kind. If if I have a full day, at a particular studio, like three hours, an hour break, and then four hours, mm-hmm. that ha- this happened twice now. Wow. But they've been like, we're getting food here for lunch. What do you want? Yeah. So I'll get lunch, and I offer to pay, and like, no, we got it. So I like that. That's great. Uh-huh. Especially if it's like, I'll try something new, and yeah. I won't feel guilty if I don't like it because <laughs> I did pay for it. That is fair. All right. Well, you are our first guest on influencing magic. Which was that what it's called? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I thought, it, I thought it was Mr. Depp's Happy Fun Time Pep Hour. It can we, be that, that too. I don't know. Working title. Um, okay, we'll right. Work credit. on that logo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we are going to wrap up every guest on the show mm-hmm. with five questions, and they're a fast five. So okay. it's kind of whatever comes to your mind first. Annie's going to ask them because I feel like I've been asking way too many questions, but I'm being a, a geek. So all right. Okay. Would you like me to answer them in various voices for fun? Whatever you sure. would be f- have fun with. <laughs> Don't make me sing. <laughs> you don't have to sing. Okay. First one. What's your favorite movie or show? Oh, my goodness. Well, I really enjoyed watching The Last of Us, which is funny because there was there really were just the last of them. Yeah. And then Poker Face. That's a good... You're both staring at me like you don't yeah, even know. Nope. Get on that haven't. train. It's sailing okay. soon. Okay, okay. Um, I, I loved Gravity Falls. Okay. I love myself some Rick and Morty. I love uh, RuPaul's Drag Race. Uh, so many others. Nice. Okay. 
Next one. What is a hobby that you enjoy outside of work? Oh, I love cooking. I get my head of fresh box and my every plate, and I just cook every day, and it's so tiring sometimes, but those meals are delicious. I also collect art books or a lot of Disney historian books. You should mm -hmm. see my bookshelf. And I collect Christmas ornaments, but I take that little chain off, and they just sit like a decorative item. Oh, they don't have to go in a box until December. You can see them every day. That's awesome. Okay. What is something that you don't know how to do, but you would love to learn how to do? Um, like if you have all the time in the world. I want to learn to speak different languages to better assist in my whooping jobs for other countries. Oh, that's cool. And maybe play the piano and maybe do more opera singing. That's awesome. Uh, okay, last question. What is something that you create that is for outside of your career? Like, what's a hobby that you already have? Oh, um, that's so real. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I do love collecting art books and, and mm -hmm. historian books and learning about the history of these different, like Disney, I'm very enmeshed in a lot of Disney stuff right now, so I'm trying to get involved in more of their extended programs and events because mm -hmm. I just love learning that backstory and that history of them. Wait, what was the rest of the question? There was something else. What uh, do you like to create outside, outside of your What do I like to create? Yeah. Yeah, something for you. A hostile work environment. I like to create <laughs> trouble. I mean, that's, that's a legit answer. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not really sure if it's a creation thing, but I, I definitely, I, I want to strive to do more like things as hobbies that I, I haven't been able to do before, that mm -hmm. I have interest in, whether they further voiceover or not. I've really been thinking about on camera. It's daunting because that's, that's something that would start from the ground up, and it's yeah. hard yeah. when I've spent so many years from the ground up with voiceover. You're basically and I starting all over then, huh? you got to start all over with this yeah. new element. Yeah. And I'm sure a lot of work has been done towards it because they all kind of overlap like a Venn diagram. Mm -hmm. But as long as I'm not taking away yeah. from voiceover, my top priority, go slow and steady and just cool. kind of learn the ropes and see is it a good fit? Am I having fun in that journey? And I, I have some family friends that are going through some things, so I try to visit them frequently, sure. see the babies, see the kids, see my parents every month. So it's it's getting that communal sense mm -hmm. of seeing more friends and family that I that I missed out on yeah. due to all of those years right. of and you need sacrificing that, definitely. It and growing. Yeah, it's it's finally like it's able to come back around. Right. That was five questions. Yeah, it was five that's and fast. And a half, you five know. and a half. You did, yeah, you did good. Um, so important thing. Mm -hmm. Where can people find you online? Right here. Um, <laughs> I'm on. Uh, <laughs> we'll see what happens with Twitter for everyone everywhere. True. But it's it's. I'm at Caitlin Robrock on Twitter, mm -hmm. and I I post mainly gigs that have come out or maybe little side thoughts. Like I don't have, have a filter, yeah. so I don't have a filter. So I'll type it, yeah. or I have enough of a filter to keep it G-rated. But I that's just kind of musings. Instagram is really promotion of work. I don't often take a lot of photos. And is it the same thing? I'm pretty boring. Yeah, uh, it's uh, K Robrock at at Instagram. And we'll have Instagram. all these in the show notes. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. um, but, but yeah, I've I've been I have been updating my Twitter picture to like the newest dropped project. That's been fun to help yeah. me out. Mm -hmm. And then Instagram, it's just Miss Piggy, classic Miss Piggy. Perfect. She, it's from this artwork, this Jaclay from years ago, and I I didn't buy it, and I've regretted it. Oh, ever that's since. How it always goes it's this to. gorgeous side profile of her and then like four small head pictures of her as well. It was just beautiful was it in artwork. I think it was years ago. Uh, yeah. And I didn't I, buy it. I can picture. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I just couldn't afford it back then, but it's limited edition and yeah. I'm always on the hunt for it. So mm -hmm. if anyone knows where it can get bought or auctioned, like, I want it. The internet is. Yeah. What will happen. I mean, so. if anybody knows, write it in the comments of YouTube or Absolutely. let us know. <laughs> and, and I do try to answer DM messages if I'm able to. I have a TikTok, but there's no videos because I don't know how to make a video. It's okay. <laughs> that also might be something going, will happen. So. So, something will happen maybe with that the next one day. Thing you'll learn. Who knows? Yeah, maybe that's what I can create there you go. outside then of You're on Disney. camera in a way. Yeah, and I'll get used to that. There you go. Totally. But yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Well, thank you so much for being on. This has been a lot of fun. Yay. And uh, follow, follow Caitlin. Like you, you won't regret it. It's been fun to know you, and I'll continue mm -hmm. to know you. I'm not going to end it today. See you at the Christmas <laughs> party. Right, hey. exactly. And uh, it's always a highlight of the year. But uh, thank you so much for being on. And thank uh, you. I think we got it. That's a wrap.
Once again, thank you, Caitlin, for being on Influencing Magic as our first guest. Very fun. So much fun. And I will say, once again, go to our Patreon, patreon.com slash dapsmagic, and check out the bonus content from this mm -hmm. episode. It You'll love it. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> um, also, make sure if you haven't done it yet, like, subscribe, review. Very important. Yes. Leave us reviews, especially on Apple Podcasts. I don't know why we chose that one, but that's the one we're, we're talking about the most. Yeah. Apple Podcasts, I think, has a uh, it will it has an algorithm kind of. So it will. It helps. It will help up and coming podcasts. We want to hit those numbers early. So if there's any way that if you have enjoyed this podcast and you want to hear more, we would love it if you could go and write and comment i think it i tried to do it after like only listening to like 10 minutes of the first one it was like no you, you gotta haven't listen to it yet. oh that's funny <laughs> so you have to listen to multiple podcasts before you rate it it wouldn't let they me want cheat credibility. i'm sorry okay that's good um you can also connect with us on social media we have that in the show notes and uh if you have ideas for people you would like to hear on influencing magic let us know in the comments or on social media we're very easy to uh to find, I feel like, on all of those. And uh, and we're always looking for more ideas, I mm -hmm. feel like, right? Definitely. Cool. Um, so thank you so much for enjoying. Enjoying? Well, hopefully you enjoyed it. But thank you for joining us for Influencing Magic. Um, this is, am I going to read this whole thing? Yes. Okay. This is made possible by <laughs> dapsmagic.com, a safe and positive place to find Disney news, resources, and community. Your hosts today have been Mr. Daps and Danny with very special guest, Caitlin Robruck. This podcast is produced by Mr. Daps and Annie. We have a lot of fun doing it. Special thanks to our guest coordinator and social media extraordinaire, Caitlin. We should also thank Katie for making us look good this mm -hmm. week. Thank you, Katie. And thank you, Roger, for your support as well. And you can find all of our social media in the show notes, so don't miss it. We don't have a sponsor yet. If you'd like to, let us know, and you could be also recognized in this <laughs> spot. But... We want to encourage you all to make it a great day and continue to be kind. Good? Nice. Sweet. We did it. Yeah. Music fades out.